Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Iran had vowed revenge and now they've struck two military bases. I'm ABC's Serena Marshall with What's Next coming up. Outside with Live Cam, if you left your winter coat in the back seat of your car and truck, go get it this morning. Let it warm up a little bit. It's cold out there today. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It is January 8th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Yep, you know, I woke up this morning. I was like, oh, no, I don't want to get up. No, I want to stay right here under the covers. It's cold. It's called a comforter for a reason. It really <laughs> is. So, yeah, you might want to turn the heater up a little bit in your bathroom or something before you get up to a bad idea. And then mid 60s later on today. So oh, that sounds be, nice. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be about like what it was yesterday, but we'll see more clouds later on this afternoon. Not much in the way of clouds out there right now. As a matter of fact, this is looking off to the west and there is that beautiful, beautiful moon. What a gorgeous picture right now. But yeah, it uh, it is cold out there. Bulverde's at 29 uh, right at freezing Randolph. Bernie Tarpley at 28 is one of the colder spots out there and there's a little bit of a breeze. Not much, but just enough to add a little bite to some of those temperatures. So it feels like it's 25 at Randolph as of right now and uh, 31 is the wind chill out there at the airport and wind, like I said, is not that strong. It's not going to be a big deal. It's going to start to shift around to the southeast later on today. That's going to bring about more changes as far as more clouds around here and milder temperatures the next couple of days. First of all, Mountain Cedar, of course, yesterday, even after that front moved through, it did drop down significantly still on the very, very high side, 16,000, but uh, better than where it was. Temperatures will stay right around the low 30s and upper 20s throughout the rest of the morning. And then later on this afternoon, we're going to have lots of clear skies this morning. Clouds going to be increasing uh, later on today and then especially tonight, 66 for a high temperature. Different story the next couple of days, including still some OK rain chances coming up here. We'll talk about that and look ahead to the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now on this Wednesday morning. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike, and good morning, everyone at home. And those hoping to head home uh, pretty soon as we take a look at the roadways right now. No accidents, uh, no delays. You're seeing uh, some slight slowdowns there on Bandera Road, uh, almost halfway between 1604 and 410, but no doubt that's due to all the uh, stoplights between those two locations. Now let's take a look outside through Transguide I-10 and Frio here near the downtown vicinity inbound outbound lanes looking pretty good with no problems there. 410 at San Pedro and over at 410 at Military Drive that's close to Highway 151 and 410. So far traveling both directions on the loop looking pretty good. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. Developing now, police continue to search for suspects that left two men hospitalized after a shooting last night on the northwest side. It happened at an apartment complex off of Bandera near 410. Sarah Acosta is live near the complex with the latest. Good morning, Sarah. Well, it's quiet now and the scene is clear, but that wasn't the case last night as police were here at the apartments investigating the shooting that sent two men to the hospital. It started at these apartments, the Cheryl Oak Apartments off Bandera just after nine o'clock last night. Police say two men were sitting outside of an apartment when they got into a fight with two other men who were in the courtyard area of the Cheryl Oaks apartment complex. Police say one thing led to another that resulted in one of the suspects pulling out a gun and shooting both of those male victims. Both of them, both of the victims were hit and taken to University Hospital in ser with serious injuries, but police say they are expected to survive. As of right now, both of those two suspects are still at large. Police did say they did get a vague description of both of those suspects with a little information they are provided and they continue to search for them this morning. Live from the Northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. 434 U.S. officials confirm Iran fired more than a dozen ballistic missiles targeting the U.S. military and its facilities in Iraq. At least two sites, including the Al-Assad Air Base and the airport, and a base in Erbil. Iranian TV calls the strikes a revenge operation for the death of Iran's top general, Kesa Soleimani. ABC Serena Marshall is tracking the latest this morning. Iran striking back at the U.S., launching more than a dozen ballistic missiles. Seen here in Iranian state TV video, 
in what they've dubbed Operation Martyr Soleimani, revenge for the U.S. drone strike that killed their top military general, Qassam Soleimani. The U.S.-Iran conflict playing out on Iraqi soil, targeting the roughly 1,500 U.S. and coalition forces stationed about 100 miles west of Baghdad at Al-Assad Air Base. That's the same base President Trump visited in 2018 as his first to meet troops in the region. The president taking to Twitter to respond, writing, all is well, assessment of casualties and damages taking place now. So far, so good. No U.S. deaths have been reported. Officials saying there was enough of an alert. The U.S. troops were in bunkers at the time. Iran's foreign minister had told ABC's Martha Raddatz they wanted a proportionate response, but do not seek escalation or war. Are you concerned that a strong response from Iran will end in an all-out war? It depends on the United States. The United States took an act of war against Iran. It will have to be prepared for the consequences. Iranian media quoted a top security official saying Iran had 13 revenge scenarios, any of which would be a historic nightmare for America. ABC News military analyst Colonel Stephen Gaynard saying this attack likely scenario 14. And so there's just a chance here that maybe the Iranians intended to shoot into the open desert to not harm the U.S., but to be able to go back to their own people and say, we stood up to America. The question now becomes how and if the United States will respond. President Trump announcing he will address the nation later this morning. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. This morning, a Ukrainian commercial flight that took off from Tehran, Iran, shortly after takeoff crashed. Iranian officials say the plane crash was caused by engine failure. The plane has 737-800 aircraft. Those type of aircraft are not known to have any issues. All 167 passengers and nine crew members aboard died. Ukraine International Airlines is now suspending flights to and from Iran. Fotis Dulles, the estranged husband of Jennifer Dulles, faces arraignment on charges that he killed his wife after divorce and child custody proceedings. Dulles is facing charges of murder and kidnapping in Connecticut, but he has denied any involvement in his wife's disappearance. Dulles's bond has been set at $6 million. Coming up, that amazing win against the Milwaukee Bucks tonight. The Spurs take on the Boston Celtics. The game will be at TD Garden, and tip-off is set for 6 o'clock tonight. Right now, it's 437, 36 degrees. Still to come, a preview of our new series called Leading SA. We're talking to elected officials about some of the Im big, Im Im try that again, big issues that impact you. We're going to hear from San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg this morning. Bear County is adding more early voting sites ahead of the March 3rd primary. After the break, we'll tell you what you need to know. And live cam giving us a look outside. Definitely pack that heavy coat this morning in, on your child, but you might not need it later on this afternoon. Mike has details. Bear County voters will now have 10 additional early voting sites for the March 3rd primary. Elections Administrator Jackie Callanan says that will bring the total to 38 early voting locations. Callanan says with the current political atmosphere, she expects 25% of Bear County's nearly one and a quarter million registered voters to vote early. That's a higher than usual turnout. The additional early voting sites include UTSA, Texas A&M San Antonio, and Northwest Vista. However, the chair of the local Green Party says more sites are needed on the east and south sides of San Antonio. So yes, the machinery is easier because you can vote for anyone in any site, but if there's no site at all, how do you vote? Catalan says potential locations are contacted, but some choose not to hold elections there. 441, 36 degrees. Dealing with customer service, well, it can be a hassle. That's why more and more people are turning to social media to get results. Still to come, the best ways to get a company's attention. And new details this morning about Harvey Weinstein's legal odyssey. Back in court today, the latest in your GMA first look. In this morning's GMA First Look, jury selection in Harvey Weinstein's criminal trial is in full swing this morning. About 120 potential jurors were questioned Tuesday. 
Potential jurors received this questionnaire. Among some of the questions, have you a family member or a close friend ever worked in the entertainment industry? It's crucial for jurors to make decisions in this case based on the evidence. They have to be objective and not base their decisions on what they know or their experiences. Jurors were also asked if they've ever been the victim of physical or sexual abuse and if they or a family member have ever been the victim of a crime. Only 36 of the 120 potential jurors received juror questionnaires and were ordered to return back to court on January 16th for further vetting. 43 were dismissed after admitting they could not be impartial. With your GMA First Look, I'm Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. It's frustrating when you get put on hold when you need to speak with someone in a company's customer service department. Turns out social media has proven to become a powerful way to complain. On your side's Marilyn Wartz on how to get results. Andres Baracaldo is so into barbecuing, he spent big bucks on his custom smoker. But when his pit arrived, it was damaged. I honestly couldn't even believe it. The smoker's wheel axle was bent, paint was chipped, and it was dented and dinged. So Baracaldo turned to social media. So I took pictures of the damage, uploaded that to the Facebook group, and then people right away started chiming in with similar experiences and how it was made right. The company noticed and quickly contacted him directly. More and more people are taking to social media like Facebook and Twitter to get results. Well, the appeal of using Twitter is that it's typically very public, easily searchable, and the company is very limited in its ability to hide that complaint. To make your social media complaining more effective, target an active verified account. Never post private information in public postings. Be honest, exaggerations won't help, and be respectful. So here's a tip to make your tweet more public. Don't start your tweet with the name of the company. Instead, put it within a phrase. That way it will show up in the timeline of everybody who follows you. Companies recognize the power of social media. They know that a negative complaint can reflect badly on the entire company. As for Baracaldo, he received repair parts and paint for his smoker and a big refund. Honestly, like I don't think I could have gotten better customer service. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, I remember big companies, including things like airlines, have dedicated teams responding to social media. Back when I was on Twitter, because I think it's a cesspool in many, many ways, um, I had an airline issue, and they were like that. I think it was Delta. I mean, they responded within minutes. Well, it's amazing, because just an email they can kind of ignore, because mm -hmm. they're the only ones getting it. Right. When it's out there, if it goes viral, you're in trouble. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let's check traffic at 447. And of course, as with all forms of communication, even though you're upset, just be responsible. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways out there, uh, still looking pretty good. Uh, the map not showing any incidents, uh, just some very, very slight slowdowns right there on Bandera Road, uh, just outside 410. But we have a number of traffic lights out there in that area. 410 at uh, Military Drive, you can see over there by Highway 151 area. Traffic in both directions there on the inner loop, still moving along fairly well. Hardly anyone out there, uh, 1604 at Potranco, but it's still very, very early. Not too many folks up. Some folks are headed home from the overnight crew. Others are just dreading pulling the blankets uh, away and getting a start to their day. Highway 151 there at 410. You can see shopping centers lit up real nice right now. So dry roads, visibility, not bad, despite the fact that it's dark out there. Should be a pleasant commute, just... Pay attention, put away those distractions once you hit out this morning. Thank you, sir. So it's cold out there. Any chance of fog? No, not today. Maybe uh, tomorrow. We've got a lot more. It's going to pretty much be transition day today with the wind shifting around, more moisture coming on in here. Uh, it will have milder temperatures tomorrow and Friday, but today's going to be then uh, more clouds later and on. And rain still forecast for Friday, perhaps? Yeah, showers, a couple of thunderstorms primarily to the east of us as far as anything um, strong or potentially severe but uh, we'll have uh, we'll have some around here so Good. just keep your fingers crossed for some uh, some decent rain well I know we've had a picture like this before but I love that that shot it's almost kind of lonely looking you know that lone basketball net there 
Anyway, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Beautiful view of the moon, which is about to uh, set. Looking off to the west, obviously we've got a lot of clear skies. By the way, the moon is officially full on Friday, so just a couple of days away from that, but basically it looks full out there. A lot of cold temperatures, a lot of freezing readings right now. Bernie, uh, Randolph, Hondo, 20s in parts of the hill country, and there's a little bit of a wind, so we have a little bit of a wind chill. 44 right now in uh, Divine, which seems kind of warm compared to everybody else, but 25 at Randolph. Randolph 24 right now is the wind chill in Hondo and all around the area. Everybody is pretty darn cold, so grab a jacket. Not much of a breeze, but when you have temperatures this cold, obviously it doesn't take much to uh, get any sort of a wind chill. Now the wind is uh, right now kind of out of the north to northwest or northerly, I should say, uh, in general, but it's going to be shifting around out of the southeast more throughout the day, and then the humidity really starts to come up, and by tomorrow morning, we're going to have dew point temperatures that are going to be a whole different story than where they are right now, and with these numbers in the mid to upper 50s, you can't drop any lower than what these numbers are, the dew point temperatures, so therefore, our low temperatures tomorrow are going to be much, much milder, and that's when, with all the humidity coming back in here, we may have some drizzle to start off tomorrow morning, as well as some patchy fall and the humidity is going to continue to go up going into the afternoon tomorrow as well as on Friday. And with the extra clouds, we'll see more clouds later on this afternoon. I'm kind of calling it mostly cloudy skies. I think it uh, is going to be dependent. You know, we'll have still some sunshine left over later on this afternoon, but they'll definitely thicken up tonight. Clouds will. And then tomorrow morning, we have those a uh, few sprinkles around here. Maybe a couple of sprinkles on Thursday, but then Friday is going to be the better day with those dew points continuing to come up here. More of an unstable air mass. The front coming on through, and this is going to be a doozy of a front because look what it does with the uh, drier air coming in here by Saturday. But as that front approaches and moves through, that's what's going to be touching off some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms around here by Friday afternoon and probably into the first portion of the evening on Friday. Timing is when as far as when the front actually moves through and clears things out. It's a little iffy depending on computer models right now, but it's looking like it's going to be about mid evening on Friday when we start to uh, clear on out. Maybe some lingering stuff off to the east. Today, 60 at noon, mostly sunny skies. Uh, we'll have a couple of clouds around here. And then later on this afternoon, 66 for a high temperature. And we're going to see uh, more clouds developing. Southeasterly wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Continues to pull in the moisture. Very mild tomorrow morning. We stay at 56 degrees, way above normal, of course. And we keep a lot of clouds around. Drizzle, some fog in the morning tomorrow. Then Friday, showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Very warm, upper 70s. There's going to be some 80s around the area on Friday. Saturday, Sunday, back to about normal temperatures. Lots of sunshine, more clouds late Sunday. Another small chance of rain on Monday. Terrific weekend once again. Yep. Thank you, Mike. 451, 36 degrees. Just ahead in your morning spotlight news, singer Lizzo is making headlines again. We'll show you why she has so many people buzzing. Oh, here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, six, five. Fireball zero, daily four, five, eight, three, eight, fireball four. Annual cash five, one, four, seven, ten, and twenty-five. And we also have your mega millions, 25, 40, 41, 52, 56. 21 is the mega ball with the mega flyer of four. Fifty-five. Now to Hollywood, where several big-name celebrities are continuing to spread the word about the wildfires in Australia. And a big honor for Lizzo. ABC's Elena Gomez has the details. Lizzo is making headlines as the first woman to headline the Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival. The singer will take the stage alongside artists Tool and Tame Impala. The annual Music Fest kicks off on June 11th in Manchester, Tennessee. Where the bushfires in Australia uh, have caused massive devastation. As fires continue to rage in Australia, celebrities are jumping in to support the cause. From every dollar counts, that money goes directly to the firefighters. Movie star and Aussie Chris Hemsworth pledged a million dollars, while Margot Robbie shared love for her home on Instagram and asked others to donate. Please, please, if you haven't already donated, um, please do. And... Let's give future generations the kind of childhood I was so lucky to have. Back from their long holiday vacation, Harry and Meghan visited the Canada House in London on Tuesday, meeting with Canadian High Commission staff. The royals thanked the group for the hospitality they received while visiting the country over the holidays. It's time we be good men. The Bad Boys duo is back. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence premiered their latest Bad Boys film in Berlin. 
And if there's one thing we can count on from this movie, the two stars will keep us laughing. We, we both handsome. We both, we both handsome. 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 <laughs> we say that we handsome. So that Elena Gomez, ABC News, Los Angeles. About three minutes till five, 36 degrees. We have a lot heading your way in the next half hour, including how the American Black Film Festival is honoring a pair of trailblazers. Plus, Facebook takes aim at the controversial videos known as deep fakes. That's ahead in your morning Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now at 5, San Antonio police searching for two suspects after a shooting at an apartment complex. Sarah Costa is standing by with the latest in a live report. New details on the Ukrainian passenger jet that crashed in Iran. All 176 people on board died. <laughs> The plane went down just minutes after taking off from the Iranian capital. Cold start to the day. How much of a warm up later on and any break in the Mountain Cedar? Mike is standing by. Good morning. It's Wednesday, January 8th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Mike was warning us yesterday. This morning was going to be cold, and he was right. And we said yesterday morning everybody was back at school, but I learned that Judson was off. They're actually back today. Well, it's a cold start. The cold start for yeah, everybody. To, you yeah. know, get back and you step outside. And it's like, oh, I've got to go back to school. And it's like, whoa, Nelly, when you step outside because, yeah, it's uh, definitely cold out there. Temperature right now is at 36 at the airport. We actually went up a couple of notches in the past hour for some reason. And then we do have some 20s out in portions of the Hill Country, 29 right now in Kerrville. And there's a little bit of a breeze out there. Not much, but just enough to put that wind chill down to freezing here in town and wind chill temperatures around parts of the area. First of all, we've got a lot of freezing temperatures out there and then look at that in Hondo. It feels like 23, 25 Randolph and 28 is the wind chill up there right around Bulverde, 26 in New Braunfels. So yes, definitely bundle up. By the way, Mountain Cedar, uh, yesterday's reading came in at 16,000, which is still way, way up there, but uh, dropped down significantly from the previous day's reading. So hopefully that's going to be the trend over the next couple of days. We can just keep our fingers crossed as far as that is concerned. Clear cold this morning, and then we're going to see clouds increase throughout the day. Uh, mid 60s for high temperatures, about normal, maybe a little bit above that. And then thicker clouds overnight, some drizzle tomorrow morning and tomorrow and Friday. It's going to be very, very warm. Then we go into Friday. We'll have some showers and thunderstorms around here. That's going to go on through about mid evening on Friday, especially in the afternoon on Friday. And the weekend is going to be just fantastic. Again, all the details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on yet? Well, right now, Mike, things are pretty quiet out there on the roadways, and hopefully they stay that way throughout the rest of this morning's commute. Right now, as we take a look at Transguide 410 and McCullough, traffic in both directions running smoothly. No problems here in the downtown vicinity, 37 at Houston. North and south on lanes have more than enough room. Not a lot of activity, 1604 Patronco, but it's still very early right now. And then I-10 and Pro Band, you can see that eastbound and westbound lanes, so far, no issues. Mark? Now to a developing story we're following. A fight outside a northwest side apartment complex last night led to a shooting that left two men in the hospital. It happened at the Cheryl Oaks Apartments off of Bandera Road near Loop 410. Sarah Costa is live near the complex. Sarah, what do police know about the suspects? What they know is that they have a vague description of both of those suspects. They know that both of those suspects are men. The problem, police were given very little information to work off of. Now, this shooting happened in the apartment complex right behind me called the Cheryl Oaks Apartments. This happened at 9 o'clock last night. Police say it started when two men were sitting outside of the, of the apartment complex when they got into some kind of fight with two other men who were in the courtyard of the complex. Police say one thing led to another that resulted in the suspects pulling out a gun. One of those suspects pulled out that gun and they shot both of the victims. Allegedly, both of the victims were hit and taken to University Hospital with serious injuries, but police say they are expected to survive. Now this morning, police continue to search for both of those male suspects. It is unclear, however, if those suspects were residents at this apartment complex or not. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. This morning, a father is happy to have his daughter finally back home after she was reported missing back in October. Honto police had been searching for 14-year-old Eva Garcia since October 16th. At one point, it even led to an Amber Alert. Her father said Eva ran away after the two had an argument over her curfew. The Bear County Sheriff's even got involved because there were reports she could possibly be hiding in the San Antonio area. 
Hondo police say Eva was found safely in Hondo after searching a local residence. Police say they received information that Eva was possibly hiding there. Her father described the moment he got the call saying they had found his daughter. I was just happy to just to know that, that they had found her and uh, I didn't ask no questions or anything. I just, you know, just by that itself, you know, that itself, that's all I wanted to hear. She's home. And thank God and everybody that supported us. Hondo police will be releasing more information today. Eva apologized for running away. She said that she was staying with friends and was safe the entire time. In your morning headlines, Iran fired more than a dozen ballistic missiles at U.S. military bases in Iraq last night. Those missiles targeting roughly 1,500 U.S. and coalition forces stationed about 100 miles west of Baghdad at Al-Assad Air Base. Right now, no U.S. deaths have been reported. Iran's foreign minister says they wanted a proportionate response but do not seek ex escalation or war. Now to the other breaking story out of Iran, the crash of a Boeing 737. It was a Ukrainian airliner and no survivors have been reported. ABC's Julia McFarlane has been following the latest developments from London. As the world watches the escalating tensions in the Middle East, tragedy in Tehran. At least 176 people on board a passenger plane died when the Ukraine-bound Boeing aircraft crashed shortly after takeoff. The 737 plane left Tehran this morning, heading to Kiev. According to the website Flight Radar 24, the plane stopped transmitting data at about 8,000 feet and crashed just two minutes into the flight. Video from moments after the crash shows several small fires at the scene. At sunrise, emergency crews scoured the debris field. The area covered with twisted metal and large pieces of fuselage in a drainage ditch. The cause of the crash is not immediately known. Iranian state-run news reports the plane had a mechanical issue. This has not been independently verified. Boeing released a statement saying they are aware of the media reports and they are gathering more information. The plane involved is a 737, but it is not a 737 MAX involved in the two crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia due to system failures. Again, the cause of this crash is under investigation. But there's wide speculation the crash is linked to the missile launches from Iran. Because the crash happened on Iranian soil, Iran will lead the investigation. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Back here at home, 506, 36 degrees. Reading a website is so 2010. <laughs> Samsung is working on a way for users to ask Google to read a website to them. Find out more in today's Tech Bytes. 2020 is not just a national election year, but a local one, too. Bear County working to make more voting sites accessible by opening more early voting sites. And live cam giving us a peek outside on this Wednesday. So happy to have you with us. Try to stay warm this morning. It's cold. By 10, 2020 is going to be a big year for elections. Beside it being a presidential election year, voters will be deciding on other major national, state, and local races. Jesse de Goyado reports Bear County commissioners approved more early voting sites for the primary that's just two months away. Several of the Democratic presidential hopefuls, a Republican president who's been impeached, and now the crisis in Iran, all are expected to fuel an even larger voter turnout for the March 3rd primary, larger than in 2016 when Bear County saw a 25 percent voter turnout, 18 percent in 2018. So I think we'll go upwards of 25. That's what we're aiming for. Since 2018, Kalanen says 51,000 people here have registered to vote. The total now nearly one and a quarter million voters, the highest ever in Bear County. The March 3rd primary gives Republicans and Democrats alike a chance to use even more of the same early voting sites, 38 of them, 10 more than in the last primary. Reluctant to say what they were, the Bear County Republican chair says she had some personal issues about holding a joint primary, but now... We've come to a resolution, an agreement, and so we're moving forward. Old photos of past races line the walls here at the Bear County Elections Office, but one thing hasn't changed over the years, the importance of getting out the vote. Whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent, it doesn't matter who you are. I think it's important to exercise your constitutional right. Now we'll see how many come out to vote. That's the key. Jesse DeGuillado, KSAT 12 News.
Just about 512, 36 degrees. The American Black Film Festival is honoring big names in Hollywood. See who is set to be honored with achievement awards at the February Awards Show. Samsung creating what they're calling artificial humans. We'll more, hear more about the super realistic video chat bots in today's Tech Bites. It's tough to quit smoking cold turkey. So Chantix can help you quit slow turkey. Along with support, Chantix is proven to help you quit. With Chantix, you can keep smoking at first and ease into quitting. Chantix reduces the urge so when the day arrives, you'll be more ready to kiss cigarettes goodbye. When you try to quit smoking, with or without Chantix, you may have nicotine withdrawal symptoms. Stop Chantix and get help right away if you have changes in behavior or thinking. Aggression, hostility, depressed mood, suicidal thoughts or actions, seizures, new or worse heart or blood vessel problems, sleepwalking, or life-threatening allergic and skin reactions. Decrease alcohol use. Use caution driving or operating machinery. Tell your doctor if you've had mental health problems. The most common side effect is nausea. Quit smoking. Slow turkey. Talk to your doctor about Chantix. Facebook has announced that they are banning certain types of so-called deep fakes. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Janae Norman have details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Facebook takes aim at deep fakes. The site is banning certain types of the controversial videos which have been altered to make people do or say something they didn't. The ban won't affect parodies, satire, or video edited to omit or reorder words. From the consumer electronics show, Google Assistant will soon be able to read web pages to you and it can even translate from 42 languages. Users will just have to say, hey Google, read this page. It's coming later this year for Android versions five and above. Finally, these are Samsung's artificial humans called Neon. They were introduced at CES. Neon is not a robot or a voice assistant. The company calls them video chatbots that can learn people's preferences and respond to their questions in an unusually lifelike way. So it's someone to video chat. It's better than Something you. To those are your tech bites. Time to check traffic at 516. Fingers crossed, no problems to report. Well, so far, we still look pretty good out there on the roadways, Mark and Leslie, as you see the map. Uh, not showing any incidents right now. And that uh, little slowdown that we had on Bandera Road, that's cleared up. So traffic resuming back to the normal speeds all over the city. Let's go over to Trans Guide right now. As we start off, we can see that right now, I-10 at the Y here in the downtown vicinity, no problems. That connector ramp right there, that infamous fine silver curve so far, no problems. And 21 at San Pedro, north and south on lanes of 21, looking great. And Highway 90 at Medio Creek, lots of backup yesterday morning. We had this exit ramp closed, that access road was shut down. But everything's all open, and those connector ramps are connecting uh, Highway 90 to 410 into 1604, looking pretty good as well. Highway 151 at 410, no problems there. It looks like we're starting to get a steady stream of traffic there uh, along Highway 151. So but some mm. folks are uh, already getting a move on this morning. That cold air isn't keeping them inside. But uh, once you head out, just watch that following distance and put away those distractions, those cell phones and those coffee cups. Thank you, Marcus. Although you probably want to keep the coffee cup between your hands, keep your hands warm for a little bit. <laughs> yes, you can use yeah. it as a hand warmer. We've had some beautiful sunrises and sunsets uh, in the last couple of weeks. Yep, and that's going to be the situation, I think, this morning as well. This afternoon, probably not quite as, uh, Ooh, that's as pretty, but yeah, that was a gorgeous one. That was from uh, yesterday, and we had a couple of those high clouds hanging around here. Sensational. Hey, you want to see another good-looking picture? And, oh, darn, the moon has set. We had the... Uh, Big old almost full moon out there, but it has now gone down. We're looking off to the west, obviously, right now. Or wait, is that? I think that may be it right there, perhaps. Yeah, I think so. That's the moon setting. Anyway, uh, it's going to be full, by the way, on uh, Friday. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it too much over the next couple of days, unfortunately, because we'll have a lot more clouds around here. It is, it's cold out there. 27 in comfort. Ball at 28 degrees, 36 out at the airport, just above freezing. Port SA and Randolph, and then there's a slight breeze. So we do have wind chills down to 27. Randolph, 23 is what it feels like in Hondo right now. And everybody is close enough to freezing to make you want to get back in bed this morning. Not much of a breeze. It's primarily out of the north um, and 
there's hardly any wind out there in most locations, and so that has allowed. We've got the perfect situation with the very light or no wind, clear skies and dry air, and that's why temperatures are so cold. Now, throughout the, uh, the morning, it's going to be very nice. We'll have a lot of sunshine around here, and then the clouds are going to be increasing because the wind's going to pick up out of the southeast. And here come the dew point temperatures. They are definitely going to start to go up throughout the rest of the afternoon as well as overnight. And as the moisture comes back in on in here, we're going to see a lot more in the way of some clouds. And then late tonight, I mean, look at this going into tomorrow. We'll have dew points in the upper 50s and even some low 60s around here. And with the extra moisture, and the cloud cover and late tonight we will start to see some uh, probably mist and drizzle, maybe even a little bit of fog scattered about the area by early tomorrow morning. And I don't know if we'll have any showers throughout the rest of the day. There may be a little bit here and there, some sunshine kind of thrown in. Uh, scattered about the rest of the day tomorrow, but then Friday is going to be a whole different situation because we're going to see a big front move on through here and that's going to obviously knock the uh, humidity out of the air by Saturday. But as that front comes through, we're going to have all the humidity around here and the atmosphere is going to be unstable enough so we'll see some uh, showers and even a couple of uh, thunderstorms primarily off to the east but there'll still be some around here so yesterday we were talking about how there wasn't anything overly extreme with temperatures but now 23 below in international falls so there's another big hunk of very cold air is invaded the united states but most of this is going to be staying off to the north so we'll be at uh, normal today and then getting on the warmer side going into the next couple of days, then we have the next front moving on through here, and that's going to sort of get us back down to normal readings by the uh, by the uh, Saturday and Sunday, and then it looks like we warm back up again to start off next week. 60 at noon today, mostly sunny skies, and then more clouds throughout the rest of today. Mostly cloudy may be a bit overstated, but uh, we'll have a mixture of sunshine and clouds. Call it that 66 for a high temperature. So once again, just a little bit above normal and then clouds moisture come back on in here and that's going to act like a blanket overnight. And so that's going to hold temperatures up in the mid 50s by tomorrow morning mist and some drizzle and then very warm mid 70s, both uh, tomorrow, Friday, mid and upper 70s, even some low 80s showers and a few thunderstorms on Friday. Primarily later in the day and the first portion of the evening, most of the activity is going to be well off to the east of us. And then that next front comes through kind of breezy on Saturday. Beautiful over the weekend and another slight chance of rain Monday. So what you're basically saying is people should make outdoor plans this weekend. That would be a really, really good idea. However, there will be probably some mountain cedar around too. Oh, there's that. 521, 36 degrees. Pop singer Keisha is releasing a new album called The High Road. When it will be available to everyone, still ahead. Big three numbers, 565, five, Fireball Zero, Daily Four, 5838, five, Fireball Four. And your cash five numbers, 147, 10, 25. Mega Millions from last night, 25, 40, 41, 52, 56. Your Mega Ball was 21 with a Mega Plier of four. It's exactly 525 to Dana Entertainment News. More awards season updates and a singer-songwriter takes the high road. Here's David Daniel with your Hollywood Minute. You are somebody that we don't know But you're coming at my friends like a missile Where are you mad? When you could be glad You could be glad Glad is honoring Taylor Swift. The LGBTQ media advocacy group is set to honor the music superstar with the Vanguard Award, which goes to allies who've made a significant difference in promoting acceptance of LGBTQ people. She'll pick up the prize at the 31st annual GLAAD Media Awards, April 16th in Los Angeles. Hey, more award news, the American Black Film Festival is honoring a pair of trailblazers. Oscar winner Louis Gossett Jr. will receive the group's Hollywood Legacy Award for his contributions to the entertainment industry throughout his more than 60-year career. And actor, writer, and producer Lena Waithe will be honored with the Industry Renaissance Award for content creators whose work helps change perceptions of people of color. The awards will be part of the 2020 ABFF Honors, February 23rd in Los Angeles. Yeah.
Kesha is hitting the road, the high road. That's the name of her new album, dropping January 31st, and her upcoming tour, set to launch April 23rd in Sugarland, Texas, and take the singer-songwriter to 26 North American cities through early June. Tour ticket pre-sale is underway, with general public sales beginning Friday. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time check 526, 36 degrees. We're continuing our coverage of the airstrikes in Iran and what could come next for the United States. Iran retaliated with the death of the nation's top general, but says Iran is not looking for war. We've been hearing about the census for months now. Now Mayor Nuremberg is saying why the census is so important to all San Antonians and why we should care. And the Consumer Electronics Show is underway and companies are displaying their top technologies. We're gonna take a look at what might you might be able to buy in the next few years. Wednesday, January 8th. Good Thank, morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. Grab that heavy coat. You're going to need it, and you'll probably need your heater in your car. Probably. Uh, one of the things that uh, once you head out, uh, most folks are going to take the coffee or hot chocolate, whichever. You want to stay warm. Mm -hmm. You need to put those away. Concentrate on your driving. Put those distractions away. Says the man with the short sleeves on. <laughs> some people get cold. <laughs> Not you. Some, some do. Yeah, because you chose the shirt neck today. I think if you don't even have to have the volume on, that's a decent indicator, a visual aid for how yes. chilly it is outside. We are going to warm up nicely, though. We'll gain about uh, 30 degrees, roughly, throughout to today and Sunny into Sunny in the mid-60s? That sounds yeah. great. And that's just a about where we were yesterday, a little bit above normal. Um, and we're going to have more clouds as we go into the next couple of days. And I have the wrong little graphic up here because it just covered us up with temperatures. But we are Hi. at 36 right now and 20s in parts of the uh, hill country and uh, look outside and you can see we got lots of clear skies out there but yeah clear skies and dry air and light wind mean cold temperatures 26 in comfort freezing bernie 31 right now in new braunfels these are the actual air temperatures then you factor in that little bit of breeze out there and we've got a wind chill still of 23 in hondo and uh, freezing right now at the airport 34 is what it feels like in the lotus 27 is the wind chill at randolph quick update on mountain cedar yesterday's reading now, the updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour and a half or so, just after 7 o'clock. But yesterday's reading did drop down significantly from the previous day, despite the fact we had that front moving through down to 16,000. Still, it's really high, but at least that's kind of encouraging. So hopefully with no big fronts for the next couple of days, we'll see some lower uh, mountain cedar. But we do have another fairly decent front that's going to be coming on through here once we get into uh, the weekend. So... Yeah, but it is going to be a good looking weekend. High temperatures today up into the mid 60s. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about some rain chances as well coming up in the next couple of days. Time saver traffic right now. Mr. Short Sleeves, anything <laughs> going on? Right now, things still look pretty good out there, Mike. So as we take a look at the map, you can see no incidents, everything in the green, which means everyone's traveling at the least at the speed limit. So just watch your speed once you head out, because uh, with uh, very little traffic out there right now in most areas, it's easy for your, that speedometer to get away from you. Right now, 21 at 410. You can see up there by the airport, travel there. Uh, not too bad there on those connect ramps and down below 410 eastbound and westbound still running smoothly at this point. Currently, no delays in anyone's travel times. Leslie? Thank you very much, Marcus. Right now, San Antonio police are searching for two suspects following a shooting on the northwest side. It happened at an apartment complex on Cheryl Brook Road that's near Broadview Drive in Bandera. Investigators say the men were sitting outside an apartment when they got into a fight with the suspects. Someone pulled out a gun. The victims were shot. The suspects took off. Now to the latest on the Iran-U.S. tensions. More than a dozen ballistic missiles launched at U.S. military bases in Iraq last night. The missiles targeting roughly 1,500 U.S. and coalition forces stationed about 100 miles west of Baghdad at Al-Assad Air Base. Iran's foreign ministry says they wanted a proportionate response to the death of the uh, Iranian general Soleimani, but they, quote, do not seek escalation, escalation rather, or war. Right now, no U.S. casualties have been reported. Arraignments for three people today in connection with the disappearance of a Connecticut mother of five who's been missing for nearly eight months. One of them is the woman's estranged husband who's facing a murder charge. CNN's John Lawrence has details. 
Fotis Dulos, arrested Tuesday, charged with murder, felony murder, and kidnapping. Jennifer Dulos, his 50-year-old estranged wife, disappeared in May. I'll be surprised if they can win it. Mr. Dulos contends he was not involved, and I don't think the evidence will show that he was. Dulos was previously charged with tampering or fabricating physical evidence. This after police say they found multiple stains on the floor, suspected blood spatter, and attempts to clean up the scene in Jennifer Dulos's home. He has maintained his innocence. It looks like police were being patient, playing the long game, really trying to hone in on evidence so when the charges came, they can really back them up. Also arrested in connection to this case are Michelle Traconis, Dulos's former girlfriend, and Kent Mowinney, Dulos's friend. They're both charged with conspiracy to commit murder. Traconis had previously been charged with tampering with evidence and pleaded not guilty. CNN hasn't been able to identify an attorney for Mowinney. According to an arrest warrant, Mowinney got access to a private lock rod and gun club where a shallow grave, tarp, and bags of lime were found by hunters shortly before Jennifer Dulos disappeared. Her remains have yet to be found. We know with no body murder cases, they're very difficult to prove. So one of the issues is getting that airtight case right from the beginning. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Thunderstorms and rain showers have brought relief for firefighters battling those deadly wildfires across Australia. But the storms have also raised concerns that more fires will be sparked by lightning strikes when hot and windy conditions return. Fire officials uh, report 2,300 firefighters are still working to contain the fire. So far, those blazes have left 26 people dead. In your morning consumer headlines, check out how you could be getting around in the future. This is the first autonomous aerial vehicle known as an air taxi to take flight in the U.S. The China-based developer says the air taxi could one day carry passengers. It is also used in logistics and has already been operating in Asia and Europe. Getting around airports could get a whole lot easier with a new travel bag called the Moto Bag. It was introduced at the Big Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. Moto Bag actually does all the carrying, complete with a seat for you to ride on top of it. Inventors say the bag can go more than six miles on one charge at speeds of up to eight miles an hour. The bag's price tag expected to be about $1,500. I see that causing nothing but problems. I know. Can you imagine oh if gosh. everyone has one of those bumping into each other? It's hard yeah. to walk around people. Where's the horn, right? <laughs> exactly. Beep, beep. 535, 36 degrees. So to come up, look at some of the new technologies hoping to better humanity. That's coming up at the Consumer Electronics Show. Plus a preview of our new series called Leading SA. This morning we're hearing from the mayor himself, Mr. Nirenberg, as he talks about the census. And Live 10 giving us a peek outside. They're still raining the forecast. Michael have details coming up. In our new leading essay segment, Mayor Ron Nierberg tells us one of his top priorities for this year is the census. Technically, the census is a survey of the population, a count of San Antonio, and that has huge implications. In order for us to get our fair share of resources from all different levels of government, it requires us to be counted. The federal government compares the population sizes to determine how much of the resources and funding go to different places. They look at the population number to see how many representatives a state or local district has. The count has larger scale voter repercussions. The mayor says we have so many people at risk for undercount. Leaders have to work literally door to door to make sure that we encourage our neighbors to fill out the census. So everything that we do from a public standpoint, you and me riding on our streets or, or you know, going to our schools depends on making sure that, that relative to the other cities around the country, we know how many people are in San Antonio. This is just one of the numerous topics discussed in this week's leading essay. You will see various topics from the mayor throughout newscasts this week. Sunday morning at 8, we will discuss the mayor's vision for the future of the Alamo City, crime rates, homelessness, and what's next in innovative forms of transportation. We also asked your questions, and we'll be able to watch the entire interview on KSAT.com and on our KSAT streaming app. Again, that's coming up Sunday morning. It's 540, 36 degrees. Here's a look at what's coming up next. Well, this little one, okay, now she moves her head to the side, but has not moved. Here, look at the camera. Look right over there at the camera. Yeah. Look at that little face. How can you resist it? You're going to meet her coming up on Good Morning San Antonio.
It is puppy time, and Veronica is here from the San Antonio Humane yeah. Society. This little one who is just sitting up, almost <laughs> like a little prairie dog in your lap. Yeah. She's real sweet. This is Amber, and she's a two-month-old shepherd mix. Um, she's real calm. She's a little on the skinny side. She just came into the San Antonio Humane Society, so she's definitely looking for a good home. Somebody who's looking for a puppy with a lot of energy, but who's still a little shy. And being a hi, you show, you're <laughs> awfully. Are you scared? Is that it? <laughs> Being a shepherd mix, she doesn't look like, though, she's going to be the biggest dog no, in the world. No, I mean, heavy on the mix, obviously. Right. <laughs> she might not be that big, maybe a um, medium size. Yeah, 30 pounder, know? perhaps, yeah, something I like that. Think so. And I'll tell you what, you keep doing this, and I think she's <laughs> about to take a little nap here. So, <laughs> what you got going on? Um, so, for the entire month of January, we partnered with Tiff Treats for their Ooh. 21st anniversary. Um, so, if you enter the code SAHS2020 at checkout when you make an order at, at cookiedelivery.com. They're going to donate a portion of their sales, 10% of their sales to the San Antonio Main Society each time. Really? Yeah. And Ooh. each sale enters us to win a grand prize of $10,000 for their charity giveaway. So it's a good opportunity to give back to the pets and also get a treat for yourself. I was going to say, a good excuse to uh, <laughs> order those nice warm chocolate chip cookies yes. from uh, Tiff's Treats and to benefit you little guys, but you can't have chocolate <laughs> chip cookies, can you? No. no. But if you'd like more information on this little one, just head on out there to the San Antonio Humane Society at 4804 Fredericksburg Road or give them a call at 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. <laughs> you need that little sweater today for sure. No yeah, good. I love a little black muzzle on that one. So oh, cute. Would you, would you? Huh? Would you, would you, would you? you can snuggle with your pets today. Definitely. Yeah, you bring the dog up in the bed and put the covers back over and but you have to go to work <laughs> in school, unfortunately. It is unnecessary. <laughs> Sorry about that. Take a look at this picture. This was from a couple of uh, mornings ago, and it was the uh, sunrise out there at mm -hmm. Cordillera Ranch. Boy, that's pretty. Look at those blues and kind of purples, yellow of the sunrise. Great way to start the work week. Yes, indeed. And we should have another uh, pretty good-looking sunrise this morning. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. This is looking off to the west. We had seen the, uh, the moon setting just uh, about 15, 20 minutes ago. And uh, moon is going to be full, by the way, on Friday. I think we're going to have to wait till Saturday to get a good view of the moon because we're going to start to see a lot more clouds move on in here. Now, temperatures, as we were talking about, yes, grab the dog and cuddle up because it's freezing in Bernie, uh, Rio Medina, 31 in New Braunfels right now, 36 out there at the airport. A little bit of a wind chill, so we've got uh, temperatures feels like 26 comfort, 23 in Hondo, and 32 out there at the airport. And everybody has these very just cold. I mean, this is not nippy temperatures. It's just downright cold out there with those uh, wind chill readings, although there's not much of a breeze. It's just a slight wind and just enough to uh, add that little bite to temperatures. Now, as far as yesterday, we had uh, obviously a lot of sunshine throughout the day. Now there's a bit more moisture coming on in here aloft in the atmosphere, this little gray shade, and then that combined with the moisture that is going to be really pumping on in here from the Gulf of Mexico. So this is going to increase the uh, surface humidity, help out with the cloud cover, and also keep temperatures. The clouds tonight, as well as dew points being up in the 50s, are going to keep temperatures much, much milder tomorrow. So will be a good probably 20, 25 degrees warmer tomorrow morning. But with that extra moisture, we're going to be seeing good chance for some uh, mist and drizzle around the area, maybe a little bit of uh, fog tomorrow morning as well. And that's what this computer model indicates. There's the clouds that continue to thicken up throughout the afternoon as well as overnight. And then by tomorrow morning, here's some of those light little sprinkly showers or even some mist and drizzle around the area. Now, as far as the humidity, it is going to be dropping down considerably. The dew points will by Saturday. This is the next front that's going to be moving on through here. However, as that front approaches tomorrow, again, we have the extra humidity, so a couple of light showers. But by Friday, we'll have showers and even a few thunderstorms around here. And there is the chance to see some potentially strong or even severe storms, mainly east of our area. But there is going to be a few of those thunderstorms out there, uh, perhaps uh, east of I-35. Like I said, I think the strongest ones are going to be staying out of our area, but we'll obviously keep tabs on that. And that's going to be Friday afternoon into Friday evening. Then we clear off for the weekend. Today, a lot of sunshine to start off. A couple of clouds here and there. 60 at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then the clouds are going to continue to thicken up throughout the day. 66 for high temperature today, just a couple of degrees above normal. Southeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. 
more moisture overnight, so morning drizzle, maybe a little bit of fog and very mild start and then a very warm afternoon up into the mid 70s, mid to upper 70s on Friday showers and a few thunderstorms around the area. Like I said, especially in the afternoon and the first part of the evening, then we clear out for Saturday, Sunday, beautiful, beautiful. Good weekend to go make drive up into the hill country or something and then back to the 70s first part of next week. That sounds nice for the weekend. Mm -hmm. Thanks. If you have to hit the road right now about 548, let's check in with Marcus. And right now the map's still looking pretty good. No incidents out there. As you can see, everything in the green. So that means uh, everybody is uh, out there with no obstructions, nothing to slow you down. Take a look at Highway 90 at Medio Creek and uh, also 35 there and uh, 281 at Winding Way. Starting at the southbound main lanes at 281 and I-10 at the Y, no problems there. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Hundreds of companies are introducing new tech products at the big consumer electronics show in Las Vegas this week. Not only are there electronics, but robots, too. Here's ABC's Romina Puga with more. Under all the fantastical foldable and 8K displays at CES are new technologies hoping to better humanity. And this is non-invasive. It's just sitting on my head. Tech company NextMind has their brain-sensing wearable on display, the first of its kind. This is a little device that analyzes your brain waves and infers what you are perceiving around you, and it allows you to actually control objects. So I just changed the channel with my mind. The headset uses your attention to act in real time, changing TV channels or playing games. But founder and CEO Sid Quitter says the technology could be used medically as well to help people who can't communicate verbally. It's your concentration that matters. LG is introducing their aeroponics appliance, a device that lets you garden indoors, controlling the amount of sunlight and water to grow plants exponentially faster. You don't have to worry about fencing in, worrying about critters eating here or the environment, okay, disturbing your crop growth. Here, it's all self-contained, very manageable, okay, and very convenient for consumers. But it's not an electronic show without some cool new robots. Bali is Samsung's personal care bot, and really, exactly what it is to help me do basic things around my home, like manage my to-do list, check up on myself, my friends and my family, or even my pets. Whether it's giant displays, beauty, home farming, or gaming, CES is introducing us to new technology for everyone. In Las Vegas, Romina Puga, ABC News. Back here in San Antonio, the annual Jam and Jams Fruit and Nut Tree Adoption event is coming back to the Pearl. San Antonio Parks and Rec Department giving away 1,500 free trees to people who live in San Antonio. It's happening January 25th at 8 in the morning. One tree per will be given per household, and there will be a variety from apple, pear, citrus, fig, nectarine, olive, peach, plum, pomegranate, and more. The event is very, very popular, so you are encouraged to get there early. That's funny. I love that. 551, 36 degrees. Bluebell released a fan favorite ice cream flavor just in time for Mardi Gras. Everything the ice cream includes just ahead. Your pick three numbers are 565 five, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 5838 eight, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 147, 1025, and your Mega Millions 25, 40, 41, 52, 56, 21 is your Mega Ball with a Mega Plier of 4. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, we're following two breaking stories. Iran's missile attack on U.S. forces, and just hours later, a deadly plane crash in Iran, killing 176 people on board. We'll have the latest on all of that as President Trump prepares to address the nation this morning. Our team is live from Iran, Iraq, and Washington. It's all coming up only on GMA. We'll see you soon. Lizzo is making headlines as the first woman to headline the Bonnaroo Music and Arts Festival. The singer will take the stage alongside artists Tool and Tame Impala. 
The annual Music Fest kicks off on June 11th in Manchester, Tennessee. Where the bushfires in Australia uh, have caused massive devastation. As fires continue to rage in Australia, celebrities are jumping in to support the cause. I mean, every dollar counts. That money goes directly to the firefighters. Movie star and Aussie Chris Hemsworth pledged a million dollars, while Margot Robbie shared love for her home on Instagram and asked others to donate. Please, please, if you haven't already donated, um, please do. And let's give future generations the kind of childhood I was so lucky to have. Back from their long holiday vacation, Harry and Meghan visited the Canada House in London on Tuesday, meeting with Canadian High Commission staff. The royals thank the group for the hospitality they received while visiting the country over the holidays. It's time we be good men. The Bad Boys duo is back. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence premiered their latest Bad Boys film in Berlin. And if there's one thing we can count on from this movie, the two stars will keep us laughing. We, we both handsome. We both, we both handsome. 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 <laughs> we say that we handsome. So that Elena Gomez, ABC News, Los Angeles. With Mardi Gras just a few weeks away, Bluebell has brought back its popular Mardi Gras King Cake Ice Cream. It's available in half gallon sizes only. It's made with cake flavored ice cream, pastry pieces of colorful cream cheese, and festive cram can uh, candy sprinkles. It's only available for a limited time, so you might want to get your hands on it while you can. You can read more about the Mardi Gras King Cake Ice Cream right now on KSAT.com. This morning, we want to wish a very happy birthday to our very own Garrett Berger. Our reporter Garrett turning 31 today to celebrate. We're sharing some interesting details about him on our website. We asked Garrett some questions and his answers might just surprise you. Like how he turned his love of baking pies into free beer and his passion for Gaelic football and hurling to Irish sports. Look for this story on our homepage. Happy birthday, Garrett. Mathematics can seem boring to many of us, but it's important for kids to learn the subject. We'll see how using a tablet can help kids have fun learning math. That's coming up in the next hour of GMSA. As we go to break, let's take a look at TransSky. You are watching GMSA. This morning, police continue to search for the two suspects that shot two men in a northwest side apartment. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. We'll have those details for you coming up. Citizens in Floresville remembering a local politician who died recently in a car crash. Councilman Gerard Jimenez's death has shaken that community, which has never lost a sitting council member before. Looking outside with live cam, if you put that jacket away, get it back out. You will need it this morning. It's downright cold. And outside with live cam, actually trans guy, 410 at Bandera Road. We will get an update from Officer Marcus Trujillo in a matter of minutes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Weather and traffic coming up, but first we start this morning with the latest on the U.S.-Iran tensions. U.S. officials confirm Iran did fire ballistic missiles at American bases in Iraq. Iranian news sources are calling the strikes a revenge operation, retaliating after the death of Atan's top general, Qasim Soleimani. Now more American troops are landing in the region. Here's ABC's Serena Marshall with the latest live from Washington. Good morning. Iran had promised revenge and the nation's supreme leader saying of those surface to surface missile strikes, we slapped them in the face. But so far, no reported U.S. casualties. Iran striking back at the U.S., launching more than a dozen ballistic missiles seen here in Iranian state TV video in what they've dubbed Operation Martyr Soleimani, revenge for the U.S. drone strike that killed their top military general, Qassem Soleimani. The impact of the U.S.-Iran conflict playing out on Iraqi soil seen here, targeting the roughly 1,500 U.S. and coalition forces stationed about 100 miles west of Baghdad at Al-Assad Air Base. That's the same base President Trump visited in 2018 as his first to meet troops in the region. The president taking to Twitter to respond, writing, all is well. Assessment of casualties and damages taking place now. So far, so good. No U.S. deaths have been reported. Officials saying there was enough of an alert. The U.S. troops were in bunkers at the time. Iran's foreign minister had told ABC's Martha Raddatz that they wanted a proportionate response and do not seek escalation or war. But... It depends on the United States. The United States took an act of war against Iran 
it will have to be prepared for the consequences. Iranian media quoted a top security official saying Iran had 13 revenge scenarios, any of which would be a historic nightmare for America. ABC News military analyst Colonel Stephen Gaynard saying this attack likely scenario 14. And so there's just a chance here that maybe the Iranians intended to shoot into the open desert to not harm the U.S., but to be able to go back to their own people and say, we stood up to America. The question does now become how or if the U.S. responds. President Trump announcing on Twitter that he plans to address the nation sometime this morning. Live in Washington, Serena Marshall, ABC News. And back to you. Thank you, Serena. Of course, this is a story we will continue to follow throughout the day, week, and months ahead. We have updates, uh, the, the very latest, as we learn more about it in our later newscasts and on KSAT.com. And be sure to tune into Good Morning America right after GMSA for more on this continuing story. And a official good morning to you. It is Wednesday, January 8th. Thank you for being with us this morning, everybody. As I mentioned earlier, it's really cold outside. You're going to need the heavy coat for yourself and the kiddos. Mike is standing by with more on our Wednesday forecast. Made it to midweek, sir. Yes, indeed. And it's been kind of chilly the past couple of mornings. It's going to be a different situation the rest of the week. But as far as this morning is concerned, we've got uh, some beautiful clear skies. We saw the moon setting uh, about an hour, hour and a half ago. And we should be seeing a pretty good sunrise coming up here in about an hour and a half. 28 right now. Now, Bolverde, 30 Hondo, even 26. That's the actual air temperature. It's continued to drop down there at Comfort. And we've lost uh, one degree in the past hour now at 35 degrees here in town. And there's a little bit of a breeze out there. So Hondo feels like 24, 27 is the uh, wind chill at Randolph. And 33 is what it feels like in New Braunfels right now. By the way, Mountain Cedar, yesterday's count, remember, had dropped down significantly from the previous day. The previous day was about 28,000 plus. Now it's at 16,000 and change, obviously still on the high side. Now, hopefully this trend continues because we don't have any really strong northwesterly winds any time in the next couple of days. Friday night, Saturday, different situation, but maybe we get some relief from the next couple of days. So this morning we are in the uh, mid 30s, mid to lower 30s and even upper 20s and then plenty of sunshine to start off the day and we'll make it up into the uh, about 60 degree range at noon and then the clouds are going to continue to increase later on today as the winds pick up out of the uh, southeast and more humidity around here. 65 for a high temperature overall nice looking day today. Uh, and then things are going to be changing overnight in the next couple of days. We do have some rain chances to talk about as well. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Marcus Trujillo, you haven't had much to talk about this morning, and it doesn't look like there's much right now. Everything's great out there on the roadway as far as people's uh, driving conditions, and hopefully it will stay that way throughout the rest of the morning commute with no accidents. So right now, let's switch from the maps, go over to Trans Guide, and you can see that traffic is starting to pick up in certain areas. I-10 and Frio inbound and outbound lanes. We're seeing more uh, vehicles out there by that 35 north and south cutoff. Also seeing more vehicles here. I-10 at 604 in both directions. 604 Culebra, so far, no delays. Right now, no delays in anyone's travel times. Mark? Thanks, Marcus. Police continue to search for two men they think shot two other men outside a northwest side apartment complex last night. It happened at the Cheryl Oaks Apartments off of Bandera Road near Loop 410. Sarah Costa live near the complex with the latest this morning. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and police have very little information to go off of as they continue to search for those two suspects. What they do know is that they're both men and they have a vague description of those men. This all started at the apartment complex behind me, the Cheryl Oaks Apartments at 9 o'clock last night off of Bandera. Police say two men were sitting outside of the complex when they got into an altercation with two other men who were in the courtyard. Police say one thing led to another that resulted in one of the suspects pulling out a gun and shooting the victims. Both were hit and both were taken to the University Hospital with serious injuries, but police say they are expected to survive. Now, as police continue to search for both of those suspects this morning, it is unclear if those men are residents at this apartment complex or not. Live from the Northwest Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you very much, Sarah. This morning, Hill Country Village Police are waiting to speak to a victim in the hospital after they say he was shot while in a parking lot yesterday evening. Police say it happened near 281 in San Pedro around 9.30 last night. Hill Country Village Police say the people inside the SUV pulled into a parking lot. The driver got out to talk to someone in another car. That led to the driver getting shot. The shooter apparently drove off. Police say they have limited information right now because they have not been able to speak to the victim. 
City of Floresville devastated after learning Councilman Gerard Jimenez was killed in a car crash Monday afternoon. City officials remember Jimenez as a man with a heart for his community and a mission for the people. He's honored as a groundbreaking advocate for equality of the Hispanic community, economic opportunity and neighborhood safety. Jimenez was preparing for his reelection campaign when he died suddenly. That's left council members in shock. We are already talking about moving forward and how we're going to progress our city and grow our city. He was one of the council members that was always open to new ideas and wanted um, everything that was best for the city. Floresville City Council says this is the first time they have lost a sitting council members. Uh, rather, they say they are planning a special dedication to honor Jimenez right now. A city council meeting scheduled for tomorrow has been canceled. In your morning headlines, all 176 people on board a flight to Ukraine are dead after a plane crash near the airport in Tehran, Iran. The Ukraine International Airlines plane bound for Ukraine's capital, Kiev, went down early Wednesday morning shortly after takeoff. Iran and Ukrainian news outlets reported that technical difficulties caused the crash. The plane was a Boeing 737-800 series, not one of the grounded MAX aircraft. Flight tracking service Flight Radar 24 tweeted that the jet had been in service for about three and a half years. A Boeing spokesperson says the company is aware of the crash and is gathering more information. New study finds the number of Americans who died from alcohol-related problems more than doubled between 1999 and 2017. Research with the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism looked at the data. They say about half those deaths were from liver disease, alcohol overdose, or alcohol mixed with other drugs. Researchers found that men died at a higher rate than women, but the largest annual increase in deaths was among non-Hispanic white women. Death rates also increased for more for people between the ages of 55 and 64. 609, 35 degrees. Harvey Weinstein due back in court this morning. New jurors are being chosen after dozens were dismissed because they admitted they could not be impartial. And the latest developments in the Middle East impacting the 2020 presidential campaign. Now candidates shifting their focus to foreign policy. We take a look outside with live cam on your cold Wednesday morning. Halfway through the work week. Thanks for being with us. Welcome back. It is now 613. The presidential election could potentially come down to three eyes impeachment Iowa and Iran President Donald Trump's order to kill a top Iranian military leader has forced many 2020 candidates to refocus on foreign policy seen as Nadia Romero is in Washington to explain we saved a lot of lives by terminating his life as mourners gather in the streets of Iran to pay tribute to Major General Qasem Soleimani Americans debate his death it's almost as though the Trump administration policy is taking us backwards as though they want us to go to war. Qasem Soleimani was the head of the top terrorist organization in the world. And you can't hide behind a uniform of your government to prevent you from being called a terrorist. Uh, you're still a terrorist. Republicans call President Trump's decision to kill the Iranian military leader decisive. It's the right decision. We got it right. Democrats denounce it as impulsive. Trump acted erratically and impulsively. Escalating tensions with Iran is prompting candidates running for president to promote their positions on foreign policy. If there is anything that we have learned in the last 20 years about the Middle East, it's that taking out a bad guy is not necessarily a good idea. Bernie Sanders is also using the unrest to knock a fellow front runner. Joe Biden voted and helped lead the effort for the war in Iraq, the most dangerous foreign policy blunder in the modern history of this country. Foreign policy will no doubt be front and center at next week's Democratic debate as the world waits to see how the situation in Iran is settled. We're prepared to attack if we have to. In Washington, I'm Nadi Romero reporting. Just about 615. Let's check on the roadway, see how traffic is looking. This is about the time it gets pretty busy. It is, it is about that time. Now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, the map shows uh, everything still in green. Uh, we are seeing some slowdowns. Uh, go to the far west side. This is 1604, that entrance ramp to eastbound Highway 151. We're starting to get some more vehicles out there on the roadway. Also eastbound 1604 between Bandera Road and I-10. Now, not to be left out, 281 between 1604 and the airport. Here's a shot from 
uh, 281 at Winding Way camera. Take a look at that volume of traffic as folks are southbound headed towards the airport from 1604 on those four lanes of traffic. So don't want to wait too long for heading out the door, especially if this is one of your normal routes. Just remember, watch that following distance once you head out this morning. Ah, one big happy flow of people oh, heading yeah. into work and school. So when, when's it going to start warming up a little bit? Uh, well, by later on this morning, we're going to start to, once the sun comes up, and we'll warm up fairly quickly throughout the morning. And then uh, the next couple of days are going to be very, very warm. So anyway. Enjoy today's cooler temperatures, if you like it. Cool. Yes, because the next couple of uh, days are going to be well up in the mid to upper 70s and even some low 80s around here. But it'll change by the weekend. So uh, quick question. What was the movie with uh, Tippi Hedren in it? The Birds? Yep. Look at that. That's a lot of birds. Those, those are those, uh, what, grackles? or Yes, sir. So what did the ground look like underneath that area? Yeah, I don't want to know. <laughs> you know, I think it With was at the birds. I want to say it was at the quarry one time and I had parked my car in the wrong spot by uh -oh. one of the trees. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Paint damage? No, thank goodness. But it, what's always amazing is looking at the uh, utility poles and the wires there and just covered, but they're perfectly spaced. They're perfectly lined up. And the birds perch there. So anyway, cool looking picture, kind of kind of scary looking in a way. Uh, we're not starting to see the glow of the sunrise yet. It's going to be coming up in about uh, oh, an hour, a little past that. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now, and that's why it is so cold. Clear skies, dry air, and some pretty light wind. 25 right now in Comfort, 31 Randolph, 30 in Hondo, and the wind chill temperatures. There's not much of a breeze out there in some places. Uh, it, just takes off a couple of degrees. Wind is either calm or very, very light. Now the wind is going to start to shift around to the uh, southeast and that's going to pull in some more moisture. We do have a little bit more moisture aloft in the atmosphere. This kind of uh, gray shade coming on in here in the water vapor imagery. That's upstairs in the atmosphere. <clears throat> Excuse me. Down here at the surface, the wind is going to start to pick up out of the southeast, and so that will eventually bring more moisture in here. And so you can't drop down below what the dew point temperatures are, which means by tomorrow morning we're going to be right around the mid 50s around here. We'll have more clouds hanging around, and the humidity is going to continue to go up uh, tomorrow and then also on Friday. And with extra humidity, that's going to make the atmosphere a little more unstable, and that's going to set the stage for uh, potentially some uh, thunderstorms on Friday. Overnight tonight, we'll have extra moisture around here. And as that builds in, we're going to be seeing a little bit of a couple of light showers, some mist and drizzle, maybe some fog tomorrow morning, and perhaps even a speck of sunshine thrown in in the afternoon tomorrow. Then we go into Friday, about the same situation in the morning, and going jumping ahead in toward the afternoon and evening hours. That's when we'll start to see some showers developing, and then especially Friday evening, maybe even some thunderstorms. Now, the brunt, as it looks like, of any strong or potentially severe thunderstorms would be in our eastern counties and well off to the east uh, in toward Houston, and that would be Friday night late, and then all this is going to move on through here and clear us out fairly quickly for Saturday, uh, but we'll just have to kind of keep a lookout on Friday. At least we do have some rain chances, though, and some kind of decent rain chances is looking like right now for Friday. 60 today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then clouds will continue to kind of build in here. Call it, I got it listed as mostly cloudy, call it a mixture of sunshine and clouds later on today. 66 for high temperature. Wind starts to pick up out of the southeast, pulling in more moisture, more clouds tonight, and mist and drizzle tomorrow morning, maybe even a little bit of fog thrown on in there, and perhaps a peak of sunshine in the afternoon. Then Friday, showers and thunderstorms. Like I said, very warm the next couple of days and very warm low temperatures. That all changes by the weekend. Low to mid 60s, a lot of sunshine, more clouds on Sunday and then maybe a shower or two by Monday. Uh, you said it. it's going to be beautiful this weekend. It'll be great this weekend. Thanks. Just about 620, 35 degrees. Facebook is fighting deep fakes on its platform, but it will only target certain types of deep fakes. Find out which ones will be allowed. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. But in my mind, I'm still 25. That's why I take Osteo Biflex to keep me moving the way I was made to. It nourishes and strengthens my joints for the long term. Osteo Biflex, now in triple strength plus magnesium. 
I am totally blind. And non-24 can make me show up too early or too late or make me feel like I'm not really there. Talk to your doctor and call 844-234-2424. We could all use an extra $100. That's a reason to switch to Jackson Hewitt, conveniently located in Walmart. Now enjoy a bonus gift card up to $100 when you file taxes with Jackson Hewitt and get part of your refund on a Walmart gift card. Get your bonus at Jackson Hewitt at Walmart. You don't want to cancel your plan. Cancel your cold. The one pill power of Advil multi-symptom cold and flu knocks out your worst symptoms. Cancel your cold, not your plans. Advil multi-symptom cold and flu. In this morning's GMA First Look, jury selection in Harvey Weinstein's criminal trial is in full swing this morning. About 120 potential jurors were questioned Tuesday. Potential jurors received this questionnaire. Among some of the questions, have you, a family member or a close friend, ever worked in the entertainment industry? It's crucial for jurors to make decisions in this case based on the evidence. They have to be objective and not base their decisions on what they know or their experiences. Jurors were also asked if they've ever been the victim of physical or sexual abuse and if they or a family member have ever been the victim of a crime. Only 36 of the 120 potential jurors received juror questionnaires and were ordered to return back to court on January 16th for further vetting. 43 were dismissed after admitting they could not be impartial. With your GMA First Look, I'm Lindsay Davis, ABC News, New York. Facebook taping, taking aim at deep fakes, the site banning certain types of the controversial videos which have been altered to make people do or say something they did not. The ban will not affect parodies, satire, or video edited to omit or reorder words. From the Consumer Electronics Show, Google Assistant will soon be able to read web pages to you. Users will just have to say, hey Google, read this page. It can even translate from 42 languages. It's coming later this year for Android versions 5 and above. Samsung also introducing artificial humans called Neon at CES. Neon, not a robot or voice assistant. The company calls them video chat bots that can learn people's preferences and respond to their questions in an unusually lifelike way. Your time now, 625. Temperature is 35 cold degrees. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg wants to, this next decade to be the decade of mobility. We'll hear what he has to say about major infrastructure projects he wants San Antonio to focus on. And learning math could be as simple as one, two, three taps, that is. See how using a tablet can help teach kids mathematics. Trans Guy, there's 10 at 1604, 1604 at Kool Labor. We're going to check back in with Marcus when we come back. hospitalized after they were shot by two other men at a northwest side apartment complex last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. We'll have the information about the suspects police are looking for. President Donald Trump expected to address the nation later today after Iran launched ballistic missiles at two bases in Iraq. Meanwhile, more troops are landing in the region to bolster American defenses. And taking a look outside with live cam, waiting, waiting for the sun to come up. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise today, and it's a cold start to your morning. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, January 8th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. How are the roadways looking? So far, so good. good. We've been off to a very good start every day this week so far. Uh, usually the accidents start to roll in right about 7 o'clock, maybe about 2-3 minutes before 7 o'clock. So this morning we've been very, very fortunate again. It feels every bit of 35 degrees out there this morning. Sure We've does. even got mid-20s in parts of the hill country. Do we really? Yeah, wow. it's cold out there. It doesn't even factor in any little bit of a breeze out there. But uh, we're going to be staying in the uh, low 30s, mid-upper 20s throughout the rest of the morning. Mostly clear skies. Got some high clouds out there this morning. And then the clouds are going to be sort of thickening up a little bit later on today. We'll be in the mid-60s, so we gain 30, 35 degrees throughout the course of the day. And this is going to be sort of transition this afternoon because we'll start to see uh, some Southeasterly wind pick up a lot more uh, humidity around here overnight, more clouds overnight, and we'll talk about what's to come after that in just a moment. First of all, here's a look over there to the east, and no glow of the uh, sunrise yet. It's going to be coming up, sun pops over the horizon just about 7.30 this morning, so we're still an hour away from that. 31 at Randolph, 25 in Comfort, 27 Tarpley, and 28 up the road in Balverde. 
Yeah, everybody's really, really cold out there. And in some places, there's a hint of a wind chill. Feels like 24 in Hondo right now, 26 in Randolph. So not much of a breeze. Basically, we have perfect radiational cooling situation this morning with the clear skies, the light wind, and very, very dry air. And temperatures warm up nicely throughout the day. Again, we make it up to 65 degrees. We'll see a few more clouds around here. Tomorrow morning, Different situation as far as may see a little bit of mist or even some fog around here. We'll talk about rain chances, which are looking okay for Friday and then fantastic weekend. Details in just a few minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Trujillo and he's over at his computer checking on something. Anything big going on? Looking to see if there's any last minute changes, but Folks, what you see is what you get. Everything in the green. No delays right now as we look at the roadway. So not a bad time out there on the roadway, Mike. Uh, folks that are getting ready to head out there and venture out on the roadways, not too bad. You know, you, some areas you will have a little bit of traffic. Uh, other areas, not too bad. Right now, I-10 at the Y here in the downtown vicinity. Traffic looking pretty good right now. If we move over to some other areas like 21 and San Pedro, heavy traffic from 604 all the way through into the downtown area on southbound 21. And I-10 and Zavala, so far, no issues there. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. And this morning, police continue to search for suspects that left two men hospitalized after a shooting last night on the northwest side. It happened at an apartment complex off of Bandera Road near Loop 410. Sarah Costa is live near the complex with the very latest at 632. Sarah. Good morning. Well, it's quiet now and the scene has been cleared, but that was not the case at nine o'clock last night when two of those men were hospitalized after being shot by two other men and police continue to look for those two suspects this morning. This happening at the Cheryl Oaks apartment complex at nine o'clock off of Bandera near 410. Now police say two men were sitting outside of the complex when they got into some kind of fight with two other men who were in the courtyard of the complex. Police say one thing led to another that resulted in one of the suspects pulling out a gun and allegedly shooting the victims. Both of those men were hit and both were taken to University Hospital with serious injuries, but police say those men are expected to survive. As for right now, police continue to search for those two suspects. The problem police say is that they have very little information to go off of, but they said they do have a vague description of those male suspects. It is unclear if those suspects were residents of the Cheryl Oaks apartment complex or not. Live from the Northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Iran promised to hit back and it did, targeting military bases in Iraq where U.S. troops are stationed. The attack early Wednesday morning, retaliation for that U.S. drone strike that killed General Qasem Soleimani. Seen as Daryl Forges has the latest on a possible U.S. response. Well, the, the we just gave them a slap in the face last night. Early Wednesday morning, Iran launched more than a dozen ballistic missiles at two military bases in Iraq, housing U.S. military and coalition forces. Retaliation, they say, for last week's killing of Iran's top general. Now the world waits for President Donald Trump's response. Following the attacks, he tweeted, quote, all is well, so far, so good. Many lawmakers are hoping the lack of casualties will sway the president's mind away from a harsh retaliation. The fact that there's no known casualties gives him greater uh, latitude in the way that he responds to, to this particular attack. He recognizes that uh, this was uh, intentional by the Iranians to hit near the air bases and in un unpopulated areas as a way to tell their uh, domestic population, we hit back but to not cross a line of killing Americans. But Senator Lindsey Graham, a major ally to Trump, told Fox News. This was an act of war. The president has all the authority he needs under Article 2 to respond. Iran's foreign minister called the attack a proportionate measure in self-defense. And Iran's Revolutionary Guard warned if the United States retaliates, quote, we will respond to you in America. In Atlanta, I'm Daryl Forges. We'll have more throughout the morning on the U.S. response to Iran's attacks, including President Trump, Donald Trump's announcement later this morning. Meanwhile, be sure to follow KSAT.com and keep watching KSAT 12, including Good Morning America after GMSA for the very latest information. In your morning consumer headlines, it is one of Mexico's biggest oil finds in years. Now, new estimates say the Zama field in shallow waters off the Gulf of Mexico likely holds around 670 million barrels of oil. 
It was discovered by a Houston-based company, Talus Energy Production, could start within the next three years. Wireless speaker company Sonos now suing Google. The company says Google's been stealing its technology and infringing on patents. Google first jumped into the wireless audio space in 2015 with Chromecast Audio and then launched its own smart speakers. More Macy stores may be closing soon. Several reports say the retailer is set to close at least 19 locations in the next few months. The company has not said where the closings will actually take place. Now this comes on the heels of Pier 1 Imports announcing it will close up to 450 of its stores. Starbucks going dairy-free and some new additions to its permanent menu. Lattes using almond milk and coconut milk now available at participating stores. A drink featuring oat milk is being introduced at about 1,300 Midwest locations with possible expansions across the U.S. And back here at home, problems with roads, sidewalks, and transportation are issues people in and around San Antonio see on a daily basis. In our new segment, Leading SA, Max Massey sits down with Mayor Ron Nierberg to talk about one of the biggest issues facing the city in the new decade, infrastructure. Mayor tells us the city council tripled the amount of resources the city was putting to basic infrastructure, focusing that money in areas with the highest need. He says neighborhoods that were left behind are finally starting to catch up. And in revitalized areas, the topics of bike lanes and there is mobility or key talking points. But this is a city of 5,000 uh, uh, miles of, of streets and, and sidewalks. So that change doesn't happen overnight. But I will tell you, we are finally gaining ground on the battle for, for safer, more effective infrastructure. And we're doing that because of the work of the city council over the last three years. What we want to do is have bicycle traffic separated from the vehicular traffic. And we need that in areas where we know that there, there would be commuting happening, especially in the urban areas of San Antonio. That's why we had the debate about Broadway. It's just one of the numerous topics discussed in this week's leading SA segment. You'll see various topics from the mayor throughout the shows this week. Finishing with a sit down interview coming up Sunday morning at 8 a.m. The mayor will discuss visions for the future of the Alamo City, crime rates, homelessness, ideas for innovative forms of transportation, and also will answer viewer questions. You'll be able to watch the entire interview on KSET.com and on our KSET streaming app Sunday morning. Right now, it's just about 638, 35 degrees. Mathematics can be boring to many of us, but it's important for kids to learn the subject. We're going to see how using a tablet can help kids have fun while learning math. Coming up after the break. They love to swipe it, tap it, watch, but uh, kids as young as four and five years old don't just use tablets to view videos or read books. One researcher says kids can use technology to help learn math. GMSA producer Gretchen Neruzzi has the details. Let's count how many blue things we see. One, two, three. Four-year-old Reuben loves to count, especially when it comes to counting his food. He tells me how many crackers he wants, how many cookies he wants, and then if he's eating the cookies and he has more than one, he'll be like, I had two cookies, and then he'll eat it, and then he'll say, now I have one cookie. Vanderbilt developmental psychologist Erica Zippert says kids can use objects all around them to do math, including tablets. Given the increased prevalence of tablets, it was really important for us to start to look at how parents and preschoolers might be exploring math on these digital devices. In a While recent study, sure researchers watched four and five year olds play a math related computer board game with their parents. Half the parents were told to help their child learn about numbers like naming the numbers on the spinner and counting spaces moved. The other half were not given any guidance besides the instructions on how to play the game. When we prompted parents to focus on teaching their child about numbers, we saw a significant increase in parents' number talk. Findings suggest tablets can be used to promote math talk between parents and kids if they are doing it together. The things that were really helpful that parents were saying uh, were things like, um, why don't you count for me? Blast off! For GMSA, I'm Gretchen Neruzzi. Our San Antonio Spurs back on the court tonight, this time to take uh, the Boston Celtics on in Boston. Silver and Black coming off a big win over the top team in the league, beating the Bucks by 22 points Monday. They'll need to do the same discipline because the Celtics are currently the third best team in the NBA. Tip off in Beantown, scheduled for six this evening. You can watch all the highlights tonight on the night beat or tomorrow morning right here on GMSA.
Dallas Cowboys hosting a news conference this afternoon to introduce their new head coach. Former Green Bay Packers head coach Mike McCarthy will be the ninth head coach in Cowboys history. He replaces Jason Garrett, who ended this past season outside of the playoffs with an 8-8 eight and eight record. KSAT is sending a crew to the news conference, so we'll have the latest information as it becomes available. Be sure to watch our later newscasts and stay tuned to KSAT.com for updates out of Frisco and Dallas. Speaking of updates, let's get an update on your morning commute. Right now, Mark and Leslie, as we take a look at the roadways, still no incidents out there. However, we do have that volume of traffic. Take a look at this Transguide camera, 281 at Winding Way. Very heavy traffic on those southbound main lanes of 281. Headed from 1604 back over towards the airport area. So <clears throat> what does it look like for your particular route? Well, uh, southbound 281 from 1604 to downtown, currently but running about 12 minutes. 37 from the southeast side. If you're coming into the downtown vicinity, northbound 37. 12 minutes for that commute. Southbound 35 from the city of New Braunfels, just to reach 1604, is just under 20 minutes. Now, if you're continuing into the downtown area, that's an additional 12 minutes. And then to look, take a look at I-10 from Bernie over to FM uh, to Loop 1604, that's going to be about 38 minutes. And once you reach 1604, you're continuing on to the downtown area, that's a 13-minute commute. Eastbound Highway 151 from 604 to Highway 90, just that small stretch, taking folks 12 minutes just because of the volume of traffic there. But Eastbound Highway 90 from 604 all the way to 35, only 13 minutes right now. It's a hot chocolate, definitely warm beverage mm -hmm. kind of morning out yes. there on this Wednesday. Before we talk about that, something we haven't talked about yet this What's morning. That? January the 8th, it is Elvis's birthday. That's right. A hunk mm -hmm. of hunk of burn love. And he would have been. What else? Was he born in 30, 35? Well, so he, he would is have been still 80, alive. So, so he would have been 85 He's 85 today. today. Yeah. Because, you know, some people say he's still alive. You think? No, I don't. Okay. That's what the National Enquirer has said many but times. But they, all the time, right? Right. Anyway, all right, it's more fun to talk about that than this. Look at this video and see what's blowing in the air. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, and the dog's just like, what in the world? Yeah, that's the mountain cedar that's coming wow. off some of those trees. Now, yesterday's count was, I don't want to say only 16,000, but it had come down about 12,000 points from, uh, from the previous day. And we don't have any big fronts, northwesterly winds, anything like that today, tomorrow, or Friday. So hopefully it's going to be staying on the lower side, but there's another front that's going to be coming through here late Friday night, early Saturday. There's the glow of the sunrise. Sun's going to be coming up in about 45 minutes, but boy, it's going to be a beautiful start today. And it's cold out there. 25 Comfort, Kerrville, 28 in Balverde, and 30 in Hondo. Little bit of a wind chill in places. 24 is what it feels like right now in Hondo, but we don't have much of a breeze out there. And and so we've had the perfect ingredients, clear skies, dry air, and light wind. That's for radiational cooling, and that's when we get our coldest temperatures, as is the case this morning. And um, basically where there's a little bit of a puff of a wind out there, that's why we do have somewhat of a, a wind chill. Now, we've got a little more moisture aloft in the atmosphere, so maybe that milky shade of the sky uh, starting off this morning. Then as the day rolls on, the wind is going to really start to pick up out of the southeast, pulling in a lot more humidity around here throughout the day. And that's going to do a couple of things. Add to the cloud cover and then also by tomorrow morning with all this extra humidity, we're not going to be anywhere near as cold because you can't drop down below the dew point temperatures. Also, as the humidity comes on in here, we're going to be seeing a little bit of mist drizzle, maybe even some fog starting off tomorrow morning. So clear skies the first part of the day, more clouds later on. And then tomorrow morning, we have those sprinkly showers around there, maybe even a couple of breaks in the clouds by the afternoon tomorrow. But then clouds continue to thicken up Friday morning, about the same situation. Then going into later on Friday, we are going to see a line of showers and some thunderstorms developing. This will be late in the afternoon and tomorrow night or excuse me Friday night and the majority notice way up there at the top of your screen that's where it gets into the, the darker shades of yellow the heaviest uh, stronger storms potentially severe storms are going to be further east and northeast we may see a few of them uh, in some of our eastern counties by later Friday but the any sort of severe threat is going to be further off to the east of us then that's going to continue to move on through here clear us out Great looking weekend, but again, the wind's going to be picking up out of the uh, northwest overnight to Friday into a good chunk of the day Saturday. 60 at noon today, mostly sunny skies, and then the clouds continue to kind of move on in here throughout the day. 66 degrees, a little bit above normal, nice looking day. Might want to keep a 
Now, light jacket handy just in case you're in the shadows today. Wind out of the uh, southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour, so a lot more humidity overnight tonight. More clouds, mist and drizzle tomorrow. Very mild start in the mid 50s. We get up to the mid 70s then tomorrow. And Friday, very warm start, mid to upper 70s and low 80s around the area. Showers and thunderstorms late Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and then we clear out for the weekend. So it looks like a decent rain chance on Friday. Again, the threat for a couple of thunderstorms, but I think the heaviest stuff right now stays off to the east of us. All right, we need rain. Mm -hmm. Thank you. About to till 35 degrees. Predictability routines and order in the home may sound boring, but it can actually be beneficial for your kids. Tomorrow on GMSA, where we look at, join us, where we look at new research that shows how it can help kids get better grades in school. Sunrise check here on GMSA. Yeah, beautiful on live cam. The news you need to know before you go is coming up. Police continue to search for two suspects who shot two men at a northwest side apartment complex, leaving those men hospitalized last night. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. This happening at 9 o'clock last night at the Cheryl Oaks apartment complex off of Bandera near 410. Police say two men were sitting outside of the complex when two other men came up to them and they got in some kind of altercation in the apartment complex courtyard. Police say one thing led to another that resulted in the suspects pulling out a gun and shooting the victims. Both men were taken to the hospital with serious injuries, but police say they are expected to survive. Police continue to search for both of those men this morning. It is not clear if they were residents at the Cheryl Oaks apartment complex or not. From the Northwest Side, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. As the world watches the escalating tensions in the Middle East, tragedy in Tehran. At least 176 people on board a passenger plane died when the Ukraine-bound Boeing aircraft crashed shortly after takeoff. The 737 plane left Tehran this morning, heading to Kiev. According to the website Flight Radar 24, the plane stopped transmitting data at about 8,000 feet and crashed just two minutes into the flight. Video from moments after the crash shows several small fires at the scene. At sunrise, emergency crews scoured the debris field. The area covered with twisted metal and large pieces of fuselage in a drainage ditch. The cause of the crash is not immediately known. Iranian state-run news reports the plane had a mechanical issue. This has not been independently verified. Boeing released a statement saying they are aware of the media reports and they are gathering more information. The plane involved is a 737, but it is not a 737. Seven Max involved in the two crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia due to system failures. Again, the cause of this crash is under investigation. But there's wide speculation the crash is linked to the missile launches from Iran. Because the crash happened on Iranian soil, Iran will lead the investigation. Julia McFarlane, ABC News, London. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, a couple of exhibits at the Duseum here in San Antonio, bringing together science and art to create the perfect learning experience for young children. And there are only a few days left to check them out. Alicia Barrera will show us these exhibits and how they can be enjoyed by the whole family. That's coming up at 9 right after Good Morning America. 6.55 on your Wednesday morning. And folks, as we take a look at the roadways, we managed to go through the entire show without any accidents on the highway. Uh, we are starting to see some increases in the traffic there. Take a look at eastbound I-10, where the upper and lower levels come back together right before that 35 north and south split. Starting to see a little bit of stacking there. Mike? Beautiful start this morning. I mean, we've got clear skies out there. It's going to be obviously a spectacular sunrise, so sunglasses and a nice big heavy coat because temperatures are really cold. 35 degrees here at the airport. 31 Randolph, Pleasanton at 30, even mid-20s in parts of the hill country. 25 right now in Comfort and Kerrville. And we're going to warm up quickly this morning up to about 60 at noon. More clouds later on this afternoon. 65 degrees. Wind's going to pick up out of the southeast. And so that's going to bring in a lot more clouds overnight. And we'll start off uh, with some mist and drizzle. Maybe a little fog tomorrow morning. Very mild in the morning. Warm in the afternoon. Same thing on Friday. Showers and thunderstorms on Friday. And then another front moves through. And that's going to clear us off for the weekend. That's all of our time. Thank you for being with us. Good Morning America is next right here on KSAT 12.